One night I was uh, driving home pretty late and this idea for this story just kind of popped into my head, almost fully formed, uh, which is kind of a unique experience. Uh, I've only had it happen a few times, very few times. Something about the idea of thinking about traffic and cars and then traveling and, and on all these lines and for a little while you're, you're next to a car and then you know everybody goes their separate ways. And I started thinking about you know, particles traveling through space and you know, for a while, maybe particles are next to each other and traveling in a similar trajectory and then you know, eventually veer off in their own trajectories uh, or stop moving, all kinds of things like that. And just all these thoughts were swirling in my head and, and suddenly the story of the idea of a parallel universe sharing that kind of existence. Um, some of uh, the current theories about if there are parallel universes, they might be a lot like bubbles in, in a fluid, you know. And so potentially we're moving at different rates through reality, if you will. And, you know, I took some, a lot of artistic license with that, obviously. Um, but yeah, this idea just popped into my head of like, that's a, an amazing metaphor for love. It's an amazing metaphor for what it means to be in relationship with anyone. We are, in a sense, each of us, a universe unto ourselves uh, that is in so many ways impenetrable. Uh, you know, I can never exist in someone else's mind. I can never truly experience life as someone else. But it doesn't diminish from the fact that we share this world. We're meant to be in relationship with each other. And so this idea of playing off of a science fiction aspect to really explain uh, what I feel is sort of the nature of relationships and how they're, they're finite uh, on, on the, in this life, at least. They're finite. There's a beauty and a fragility to that, but there's also something that's really worthwhile about embracing this moment when my trajectory in life coincides with the trajectories of other people be able to say, you know, just embrace this moment versus worrying about, well, where's, where's my life trajectory going to go uh, or, or someone else's and, you know, wanting to shield myself from that. Honestly, it was such a daunting, intimidating idea when the, when the story first came to mind uh, that I didn't write it. I, I couldn't write it right away. I, uh, I think I spent at least a week, maybe maybe a couple weeks. Uh, I would think about the idea. I think of, think about how I was like, I want this to be the story of the scientist who falls in love. But then, of course, the, the universe is drifted apart, and he's telling the story to his daughter. Like honestly, I, like I just took me a while to be emotionally okay with telling that story. Uh, I don't know if that's just if that's weird or. It was just my personal response emotionally to, to the concept was so visceral that I couldn't get around to writing it initially because I, I was too busy having like a fighting the lump in my throat, uh, quite frankly, and and just um, and I was I think I was a little scared that I I, I felt like it's a beautiful idea and I don't know if I can do it justice and I still don't know if I did it justice. Uh, I just, I, I hope that in some fashion, some of what, you know, just kind of hit me like a freight train on that drive home that night gets communicated through the movie. So I hope that as people engage the movie, watch the movie, that on some level they, they maybe embrace that idea, are reminded that yeah, life is finite, but there's a beauty to that. There's a, there's a real value to that, uh, the value to the fact that we should invest in relationship, uh, that shouldn't keep us, uh, make us afraid to spend, you know, as Henry talks about at the end, you know, wasting time on bitterness, on, on being angry, uh, wondering uh, why it is that, you know, we might feel cheated out of, love out of a relationship with someone we care. 
And that can take so many forms, you know, that it can be from as simple as you know, this person that you love breaks your heart and, and, and leaves you, or uh, someone you love uh, dies. But at the end of the day, I think we don't do ourselves or the people around us any, uh, any, any good you know, by investing ourselves and our, our energies uh, into bitterness and uh, rather being able to embrace the here and now and say, well, I know it hurts. I know it hurts, but it's still, the, the alternative is much worse, <laughs> you know. Numbness is much worse. Uh, it's much better to invest and to embrace the here and now and say, this is worthwhile, even if it is temporary because none of us know how long we have with each other. And it can be easy to take things for granted on one level. Uh, it can also be easy, I know, I suffer a lot from wanting to skip ahead, <laughs> you know, get on with life, so to speak, and, you know, be thinking about, well, you know, if only I was at this place in life or this was going on for me or, you know, then, you know, once I can get there, the, then life will be good. But when in reality, it's like, no, you know, life is good if you, if you say it's good <laughs> to many degrees. I mean, obviously there are circumstances when that's not true, but, but so much of whether or not we think life is good is whether or not we think life is good, whether or not we take on that attitude or we're, if we're investing in our energies and being bitter and um, not being in the moment, living, you know, for the future, uh, we kind of lose sight of, I think, the value of what we have right before us.